good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Chairman Baskerville, and I'm doing my presentation on the Ecosystem Services Byron Trees on TCU campus. Um, why am I nervous, you ask? Well, I am indeed not a tree hugger, but I do support trees. I haven't hugged a tree yet. Um, and um, I'm doing my research with Dr. Levy and also my peer, uh, Lauren Trotter. And we're, throughout the school year, we've been doing and trying to measure, which we've been trying to measure uh, ecosystem services on the trees. And um, that's why I wanted to just do it here. So um, here's Dr. Levy here. And I just wanted to show our, like our sample that we're doing. So um, every Friday, whenever we go out to, to do our measurements, we are doing a sample as of right now of 13, and that's in the presentation. And the four species that um, we've had in our sample are magnolias, live oak, red oak, and sweet gums. And uh, as you can see, we're around with and Scott. Um, more of our sample came from over here. Sweet gums are gonna be around Tucker on this area. And then a few of the bigger live oaks are gonna be around Fit Ridge on this side. And um, through our sample, whenever we do have to take the sample, it's going to say like street trees, and that does matter in the acts of where cars are and how much pollution that it will intake um, from the volatile organic carbons. Um, whenever we do upload the software, we go out into the field to get our measurements for each tree. Um, for our sample, we have to take um, parameters such as diameter west height, which is like the whole width of the tree, um, the species matters, uh, crown light exposure, amount of how much sunlight that it does receive. So zero would be if a tree is surrounded by buildings or it's surrounded by other taller trees where it can't really it can't receive sunlight. A five would be if it's a big growing tree and it has sunlight on all sides of its um, of its position. Uh, live tree height to where it's like if there's any tree depth as far as branches and if that affects it. Um, and distance from buildings as well as receiving sunlight. Distance of tree, I've already covered that. Um, distance from the street um, matters as well of um, how much pollution it can catch. Um, of all the ecosystem services, um, there's uh, pollution prevention, there's uh, soil erosion, there's uh, prevention of so uh, soil runoff. Um, you have the uh, pollution removal, you have carbon sequestration, hydrology effects. These are all a bunch of ecosystem services that are offered, but I just want to kind of narrow it down to three that our campus actually does promote. Um, it, in our study, it's going to matter about what species um, that is going to be implemented just because if you uh, if you look at these live oaks, for example, this one on the left side, it's small. It's a smaller species of the live oak, so it's not going to suck up as much carbon as well as deline delineate uh, pollution. Whereas the one on the right, it really doesn't matter as far as the tree size and the age. We, we weren't able to to see how old each tree was, but whenever you do have buildings that are being built and land clearing is oriented. It's going to matter that when we, we do, whenever we replant trees, it's not going to make up what the ecosystem service that was once provided by it. The species does matter as well. So live oak in our study um, was mo most was most dominant and prominent of being able to suck up carbon as well as produce oxygen. Whereas sweet gums, because they don't produce a lot of biomass of leaves, they're not going to do as much of a, as a, as a great job as these live oaks. Um, of all of the 13 trees that we did our study on and the ecosystem service that we put into iTree Eco, it was totaled out to be $116,261. Um, just from of everything that was put in, you know, and most of that was from the live oaks that were in because of, I think nine of them were from that certain species and the rest of them were made up of magnolias and sweet gums and they didn't do that much of a job. Um, as because they didn't contain that much biomass in the leaves area. Um, as we know that um, in Dallas Fort area, urbanization is going to be something that we're looking at. You know, people are going to be moving here and there's going to be a lot more land clearing um, and the population obviously is going to increase. That means more impervious services, more cars will be coming into the area. And that is, that is something we're going to have to look at for not just um, what is going to be made up of because right now even though we're sustaining and if you look at our uh, air quality standards all we have is ozone and um, we have 
particulate matter 2.5 that we really do have to worry about. And trees do a great job of sequestering that and sucking up those type of pollutants to where we really don't have to worry about it, like I said. But later on in 2050, that might be something that we do have to look at and think how can we like stay at the level we're at now to where we can actually diminish it and not have to worry about it. So like I said, for uh, national ambient air quality standards, ozone in particular matter of what we struggle with, you might get alerts on your phone and say um, that watch out or you, I don't think you would have to wear a mask for it, but our trees on campus do a great job of diminishing ozone in particular matter. And whenever I updated, whenever I uploaded the data to the software, that is something that it, it did resemble that these trees do a great job of. The, uh, I think it, the worth of the 13 samples that uh, I looked at was around $90,000 worth of replace, replacement value just because of this chart right here. Hydrology effects that these trees do um, from water runoff, um, they increase, it is from urbanization. So whenever, not just on TCU itself, but around Dallas Fort Worth, whenever we do implement impervious services, that's going to that's going to diminish the hydrologic cycle. As you guys may know that whenever we get rainfall and it carries the stormwater systems, it's going to um, diminish the water that's being replenished into the aquifers and water tables, as well as the interception and transpiration um, that our trees do implement because they prevent soil erosion and they increase the uh, infiltration and percolation that water does whenever it comes through precipitation. Even though um, I didn't implement oxygen production as one of my ecosystem services that I was that we've been measuring through our study, uh, it was something that I did look at uh, after the sample was taken. Um, each year from the 13 trees itself that um, were, were used in our study, 1.400 tons of oxygen are being produced per year from these 13 trees around campus. Um, we're gonna be doing probably in the next week, five more. So I'm gonna be able to update it and inform you guys about what um, what 18 trees will look at and the difference of from now until um, that, that updated survey will be conducted. And uh, what I wanted to also emphasize on is that uh, with leaf biomass, that really does matter. So obviously trees, they intake, car uh, carbon they intake carbon dioxide and so they take it into oxygen. What all depends on how much leaf biomass. So, this graph would be way different if the study was only just conducted on sweet gums. Sweet gums are gonna be the trees that have like really spiky balls on the branches, you may see them over there, whereas a, a live oak is gonna have a lot of leaf biomass and is going to have a, a good uptake of uh, that amount of oxygen every year. Um, my solutions for uh, our study that I, I'll probably implement is that green, for, a green infrastructure for sustainability uh, tactics for one, even though, um, like I said, we're gonna have a lot of more people moving to the Dallas, Bull, Dallas Fort Worth area, um, we can't just like stop doing construction and stop building. I mean, the best way to do it is implement trees into our construction plans and do a benefit for nature to kind of uh, get a neutral, neutral ground with it. In tree planting, we can never have enough trees in order to diminish carbon uh, carbon structures and increase our oxygen production. So, and that is it. Cool, thank you. Eight minutes and 45.